All right, so what we're doing here right now is we're going to make a sample for our uh, GCMS. Um, <clears throat> and so what, we, what we're first going to do is we're going to take some of our unknown, and we have to dilute it because it's way too concentrated right now. So what we're going to do is we will dilute it in our solvent, which is going to be methylene chloride. Um, so to do that, we will take 10 milliliters of our solvent. Okay, so we have 10 milliliters of our solvent there. And what we're going to do is we're going to dilute our unknown. So to do that, we're just going to take one drop of our unknown and put it in 10 milliliters. And that's all we're going to do. So that's a really small concentration, but we want it to be like that. I'll explain why later. So the next thing we're going to do is we need to filter the sample that we just created. So here's our sample that we just made. Get it all mixed up. So what we're going to do is we're going to filter it. We're going to use a, a three milliliter syringe as well as this little uh, screw on filter. Um, we'll place it inside this capsule. Here. So we'll just draw up some of our sample into the syringe. Put it on the filter. And then just filter it through. Okay. So we filter our sample to remove any solid particles. Um, those solid particles can damage our GC, get stuck in the detector, get stuck in our column. Um, and just cause a lot of bad problems for our GC mass spec. Um, the other reason that we use such a small dilute amount um, is because we don't want to overload our detector. Um, if we overload our detector, it can shut off, and we don't want that to happen. So the actual concentration or the um, concentration of our sample is actually 50 uh, ppm. So ppm stands for parts per million. Um, and ppm is equivalent to 50 milligrams per liter. So 50 ppm is equal to 50 milligrams per liter. Um, if you look at it here, you can actually tell that uh, the size of our, of our compound really doesn't matter. So the method of weight doesn't really matter um, as long as we have 50 ppm. All right, so this here is our GC med spec. Um, in this box right here, this is our GC. Um, inside of here, we have our column is filled with uh, C18, that's going to be our stationary phase. Um, our mobile phase is going to be helium gas, which is in that tank back there. So the helium gas will push our sample through our stationary phase, it'll go through our uh, coiled column, and then it'll exit here uh, coming to the mass spec. Um, our mass spec is EI positive ionization, so it's electron impact ionization. Um, the way electron impact works is that a beam of highly energized electrons are emitted from a filament and the electron's path is perpendicular to the path of the gaseous molecules. As electrons move closer to the molecules, the molecules' own electrons are then ejected from the electron cloud due to electrostatic repulsion. So we're here at our method detail, um, and right here this is our method detail for our GC. Um, so as you can see here, a couple of the important things is our uh, oven temperature, which is also the temperature of our column. That's going to be set to 50 degrees Celsius. And then our injection temperature, which is going to be 280 degrees Celsius. Now our injection temp is uh, 280, which is also the same temperature as our um, GCs in, in the lab. And so we'll go over here to our method detail for the mass spec. And so some of the things that we want to talk about is our uh, solvent cut time, which is going to be 1.65 minutes. And the purpose of a cut time is basically to keep the detector from getting overloaded. So basically we wait to turn on the mass uh, spec detector um, until most or all of our solvent has left the instrument. Um, so other than the cut time, we have our event time, which is right here. Um, so our event time, is essentially how often the mass spec is scanning the sample. 
So we're going to run a new scan every 0.11 second. Um, so mass spec uh, start. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, so basically, this is the starting mass that we're going to look for, um, and then this is our end mass. So we're going to be looking between this range here of uh, mass to charge ratio. All right, so we've already clicked uh, OK, and we've clicked on standby, and basically our GC uh, is set up, um, all the temperatures where we want to be. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, inject our sample. So our sample is going to be uh, one microliter with no air buffer um, right here in the syringe. And so the way we're going to do this is that we're just going to uh, put our sample into our port, and at the same time we're going to inject and hit the start button at the exact same time. Um, so here we go. Just like that. Okay, so this here is our um, the results that we're getting from our GC mass spec, and this is in real time. So if you look here, uh, you can see that our detection starts at two uh, two minutes. Um, this first peak here is contamination, and the second peak here is uh, the compound that we were looking for. Um, and as you can see, there's nothing else following that. So what we do is after we see this peak here, we need to analyze it. So to analyze it, we'll go through this screen here. So this here is our peak. And we, we click on the top of our peak right here, and then we'll see the mass spec data for that peak. As you can see here, the mass spec says that whatever caused this peak here has a molecular weight of 92, 91 to 92. 